All right. Welcome to Tuesday's Tools on Purpose at the My Business on Purpose podcast. Tuesdays are all about equipping you guys with the tools that you need to live your life with intention and purpose. Our mission here at BOP is to liberate business owners from chaos so they can make time for what matters most. Guys, my name is Patrice Miles. I'm one of the coaches on the team. And every Tuesday, we dive into the world of tools because in a world where your time is very precious, finding the right tools to streamline your operations and elevate your business can make all the difference. So each episode, we bring you interviews with experts. We share success stories. We provide step-by-step guides to empower you on your journey towards a purpose-driven life. But remember... It's not just about having the right tools. It is about using them with intention to create a life that's meaningful and fulfilling. So today's topic is LinkedIn. I'm super excited to have my brother, Carter Paulsgrove, with Momentum here. He is a regional sales manager, and he works directly with their sales partners in telecom services. Now, I asked Carter to be on the podcast because he has a huge presence on LinkedIn, and I love following what he does. And I asked him to come on and share what he does. So So Carter, welcome. And I would love if you could just start us out, tell all the business owners why you use LinkedIn and kind of just show us what you're currently doing and how you use it. Absolutely. So when you think of LinkedIn, you know, every business has ways where you're accessible to the public. So for example, if you're a business and you want to be found on Google, when you search for a business on Google, there's multiple ways you're going to consume this information. And depending on the type of customers you're trying to reach, you might be a Twitter user. Uh, You might be a LinkedIn user. So here, Um, so there's, there's different platforms you want to be present on. LinkedIn is one of them. So when you consider making your business accessible on LinkedIn, you want to, how, how do you want to present yourself? And it's very similar to what you might have on your website, but also depending on the size of your business, if it's a business where it's very you centric, meaning you are the, the personality of that business, then you know having a personal page uh, that's maybe associated with a business page is, is really important. But if, if you are kind of the, the personality around it, uh, then making that personal page can be critical. So for me, it's, it's, it's very helpful because I can't be everywhere where I'd like to be. And my customers are on LinkedIn. They consume LinkedIn. You really have two types of people that are on LinkedIn. I use it to, to put information out there to present my audience, my customers that want to partner with me to sell services as very informational. I want to use it to present information. Uh, depending on your type of business, you might want to present on you know what's happening in the market. So for me, it's here's information that you can learn something from, and it's primarily around technology. So I try to be educational with the content that I put out there because either you are a consumer or you're you're an educator on LinkedIn. So I'm trying to present information to the consumers and making sure your image is, is clear and understandable. One tool to use is uh, if you search LinkedIn SSI login, what that's going to give you is your score. So one of the tools that um, you can use is understanding what is your score. And you can get a sense of here's where I rank out there and get a sense of where you are and where you need to make some improvements. I love this, Carter. I have not seen this before. So this is fantastic. So is your score a good score? I mean, it's not bad because I'm very specific on what I talk about. You know, it could be higher. So there there are ways to, to increase this score by filling out more of the information on LinkedIn. So when you when you get into your page, I don't have probably as much as I could, meaning details about me. Um, it's more of the content that I'm putting out there. So the most of the posts, because my consumers are eyeballs, meaning they're scrolling and I can capture them for a very brief moment. So the videos and the content that I put out there, are it's very specific and narrow. So one of the ways to increase your score is to broaden the information that you're putting out there. So yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. Okay. I do. Makes sense. And ultimately, as far as what I'm hearing you say is that really you're trying to educate people. You're attracting them by educating them on either your products, your services, or just in general, the industry. Does it, is that about right? Right. So, I mean, I think if you, depending on your type of business, people know what you do. So mm-hmm. when someone says, you know, my customers know what Carter does, but it's a matter of if I'm the partner and I get to pick, I'm going to work with Carter and work 
Patrice, I'm going to work with Joe, I'm going to work with Bob. Who am I going to pick to work with? And the goal for me on LinkedIn is to stand out amongst those five or six or 10. So they say, you know, I'm going to pick Carter because I have a personal connection with him because I see his information on LinkedIn. He's visible. Um, I don't know, Carter. It's almost like when you see an actor on the street, you, know, you might call them by their actor name because you've watched them in a sitcom or a series or a movie. And you feel like you know them, but you don't really know them. You just can identify with them because you have some sort of connection with them. So the more you make yourself visible on LinkedIn with, with video and pictures and content and education, you'll connect with your potential customer. Okay. Yeah. And I love what you just said is ultimately you're on there to be visible. So that way, when they have that need or make that decision, they're picking you out of those five or 10 other people. And that leads me right into my next question. What are some of the best practices that you feel like business owners should be using on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. Keep it professional. So one of the things you see on, on LinkedIn is not a social media sharing pictures of your child graduating from college. I've seen that. It's it's not effective. So keep it focused on what your message you're trying to convey. And if it's a certain product, if you're in the housing business, if you're in the remodel business, carpet business, whatever that might be, keep it educational. So one of the things that... I've tried to uh, focus in is is content. So this is my expansion into Nashville, making it known that you know as I'm reaching out to partners and agents and customers, and I'm also tagging them um, and, and looking them up on LinkedIn, you know they're going to start seeing that messaging. Um, this was an event that we had, and I interviewed several people um, and highlighting those people. So as you can see here, I'm tagging multiple people. So when you start tagging other people, it shows up in, in those people's feeds. But then really outside of that, it then turns into more educational. So I really try to keep it focused on you know what's the messaging you're trying to share and keeping that message consistent with education. You know, if I'm going to give you a couple seconds, 30 seconds of my time, I'm going to view something. What can I take away from it? Yeah, that's fantastic. And I love watching your videos. That's one of the things that captured me was, you know, constantly seeing you doing videos of interviewing different people. And then what I hear you're saying, though, is, is that tagging um, of people in those posts so that it actually shows up on their pages and different things like that. Is there any other best practices that you feel are pretty important to anybody who's going to invest time into LinkedIn? Yeah, hashtags too. So the, the, the beauty of hashtags are what happens when you start using hashtags is that you can categorize, um, let me see if I can find a quick example, you can start uh, categorizing your videos in a group. So in other words, so yeah, using hashtags. So, and don't be scared to post. So if I do, if I click hashtag CP Expo, I'm going to see all the uh, posts that was associated with this event. So, for example, you have an event, you go on site, it's a large expo, so you go to a building expo, financial expo, there's going to be a hashtag associated with that, so you tag all your posts so it, that, so it gets sorted in such a way, and it shows up in a variety of different feeds. The other thing is, within your posts here, you know, making sure your information is quick and accessible. People want to reach me. You can, here's my mobile number. Here's my email address. That probably should be a work email, but either way, you're going to reach me. So make that quickly and accessible. You can put your company website here, but making it quick and accessible. Uh, when you come down here, featured, these are featured videos. So if you go into your posts, you can click on any of your uh, posts here and up here in these little circle tabs you can feature on top of profile. So that is where it's going to show up on the top. So if you want something quickly and accessible, because the thing about LinkedIn is that there's, it's not like Facebook or something where if I go to your homepage here, and again, if I did not have this featured section, where would you see all my videos and pictures? You're really not, that's not the intent. The intent is I'm Carter. I work for Momentum. This is my title. This is how you get a hold of me. If you want to learn more about me as far as where I'm located, what I'm all about. And then I guess the last thing here is the about. So one of the things that we're all guilty of is we want to make this very professional. I am so-and-so. I have this experience. And The point here is who is Carter? Carter's got a lot of experience here. He's a regional guy. He's done a lot of uh, telecom sales. Nobody cares. 
What they want to know, depending on your type of business, is making it personable. Who is Carter? Okay, so say I owned a carpet business or a homeowner. So what? Everybody, you know, people know that you have a carpet business, you have this type of business. People can put that in a category very quickly, but who is the business owner? Who am I? Well, within the about, I'm able to outline who I am. And you want to connect with your customer, depending on the size of your business. Yeah. And that's another thing that I hear over and over again when I listen to podcasts and different things like that is these connections, you know, connect with as many people as you possibly can. You know, you need to have more than 500 connections. Can you speak anything on to like, you know, the purpose of connections and why I should be connecting with people and what that looks like? Mm -hmm. So it does affect your SSI score. So okay. that, that sales uh, indexing scores. So the, the goal is you want to be connecting uh, between seven and 10 new people a week. And so that's new connections. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You know, it really depends on your type of, of business, but you do definitely want to grow that, that sphere of influence. So if you knew somebody that you wanted to connect with and you're searching for them and I want to go find Patrice, I want to see who Patrice is connected to. She seems like she's well connected. You know, you want to see your mutual connections and I want to see all of them. So what this is going to show me, she's got 982 and I can search if I want to say, you know, who, who does she know that's in Louisville? Here we go. Jeff Kurt, who's that, you know? And so I can go down the list and I can connect with those people. I can right click and I can uh, jump over and I can view their, their profile and so forth. So yeah, it is important because it's going to grow your influence um, in the way the algorithms algorithms are are built in LinkedIn. The number one, your content's going to aggregate to the top when you do native content. So what that means is you're not taking a third party and interjecting it into LinkedIn. So this video is native to LinkedIn. So it's going to get a lot of views. 1588, and you can see your views down here. So I'll show you the difference as I keep going. Look at this down here. This was a, we're changing this format, but this is a YouTube. So I have to click here and go to Google, which is YouTube. But, and it's not, it doesn't get as much visibility. But when I do native content, meaning it's text, it's pictures that I'm giving to LinkedIn for them to aggregate, it's always going to get a higher impression rate. Here's just a picture with some text, but I'm highlighting, thank you for an effective partnership together. This is a, a partner of mine that sells my services. I'm, I'm pinging multiple people here. Um, so it feeds into their, into their feeds, but use uh, native content that you create or, or somebody else's, but insert it into LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and that's huge because the algorithms on LinkedIn determine, of course, if you're going to show up or not. So you guys heard from Carter, definitely using that native content. Um, so you get more impressions connecting with people. Um, I had also heard that the more you comment on other people's that really mm -hmm. helps your scores and that algorithm yeah. like you more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's one of the things I could do better. Um, I tend to be someone that doesn't spend enough time on the homepage, meaning you just click here and you scroll through. I've tried to get better at liking other people's feeds, commenting. Here's Ira. I could comment. He's got 10 comments. I could like, but you know, for me, this is, you know, I'm not really interested in what he has to say, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Commenting and liking and engaging uh, LinkedIn will help your score. Hence, probably what my score could be higher, but I'm using it more, really more of just, I'm, I want to create content and put it out there for the LinkedIn consumers. But if you're just getting started, start finding people on LinkedIn that you know, connect with them, start commenting, start liking, start engaging the audience. You don't have to create content, right? Especially if, you, if you're new to it, just start liking, finding people you know, uh, finding people's pages. So um, if you are a business and you do business with somebody else and they have a business page, then, you know, go find that page and follow them. Um, so then that content will start showing up on, in your feeds. So when you, when I start seeing this stuff now, I can like it, I can comment, thank you for sharing, you know, things of this nature. So it starts to, um, you start interacting with the platform.
And then talking about the actual like business page, if that's what they call it on LinkedIn, you know, do you feel like as far as content, if you have a business page and you have a personal page, I mean, are you posting the same thing? Are you trying to post different stuff? Cause I'm just like, okay, great. Now I've got two things I have to yeah. manage. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it is super important. I mean, you, you want to have some visibility, but you know, I think putting it on both. So it doesn't hurt anything because you're going to have more connections likely on your personal page as opposed to your business page because your business page um, you need people to come to you so when i look at some of my invites that i i think i've got some here recently so here we go so what these people are doing here is they're asking me to follow their page so this is th these are people asking me to follow their pages. So you can, what you can do is once you start building out your personal environment within LinkedIn, yes, creating a company page is, is part of, you need to have a presence. It's like saying, I don't have a website. You, you want to have a business page on LinkedIn. It doesn't, you don't have, have to over initially think it, but yeah, you do, you do. And as far as the content, just post it on both. It doesn't matter. Okay. Start somewhere. Okay. And um, I know that you have a uh, tips and tricks for posts in LinkedIn mm -hmm. that you've offered to Tastic, and we will definitely make sure that that's available for everyone, um, which has a lot of your best practices on there. Yeah. Um, and then also guys follow Carter Paulsgrove. Um, he does an amazing job. You can just watch his stuff. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say thank you, of course, for coming on and sharing with us. But before I let you go, I wanted to just ask you one more question. Is there anything else you would like to just share with our business owners to just encourage them with managing LinkedIn? You know, you look at the younger generation, everything's video, Snapchat, um, Instagram, everything is video. The, the younger generation, that's 20, 30-ish age, everything is video. So, you know, text is, is very important, but do not be scared to put yourself on video. Uh, don't overthink it. Just Turn your video on, start recording, putting content out there. Don't be scared of video. Be bold and, you know, reach that, that younger generation. Yeah, no. And I think that's fantastic. And I know that the first time you encouraged me to do a video, you were like, here, I'm going to turn my phone on right now. Let's just video it right here, right now. And I was kind of like, what? Wait a minute. We're like in a parking lot and there's cars going by and you're like, it doesn't matter. It's just getting content on there. Um, and I know for a lot of small businesses out there, they're kind of like, oh, I'm an HVAC company. You know, I, I, I don't need to be on LinkedIn or I'm a painter. I don't need to be on LinkedIn. Um, and I'll tell you some of the best videos I have seen is like spray foam insulation you know, watch yeah. somebody show how they sprayed foam, you know, and ultimately oh, yeah. I believe if I need spray foam insulation, I'm probably going to go right. find a company because I've been seeing them on LinkedIn. So it yeah. worked. There was, here we go. There was like a black, oh, it was a, just recently I watched a video on a certain color paint and <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was trying to figure out this paint of a car, this color of a car, and I watched it. It was like a 30 second video of some guy at a dealership. So I met with the dealership not too long ago. They have they have more revenue coming in from YouTube on people Googling how to change a battery or how to so they do these videos now once a week that, that feed you into um, YouTube. So yeah, if you're HVAC, great. Well, how do you change the thermostat out mm -hmm. on a wall? I, I would watch that video. And if you start generating content, you move up in the feeds. And you never know where it can take you. All yeah. these YouTubers and video content people started with just small little videos and it took off. Yeah. So you guys heard it. It doesn't matter what your business is. If you offer a service or product, just simply doing short videos of what that service or product does, how it works, how it can be used, um, just encourages people, yeah. make them think that, you know, you, you could, are the expert in that field. You can get a little $10 stand. You can mount a cell phone to it. And off you go. Don't overthink it. There you go. And I'm sure you could probably get that on Amazon and have it delivered tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sounds Absolutely. good. Well, Carter, thank you so much for yeah. coming on. This was fun. You definitely gave me some new knowledge. So hopefully um, it helped a lot of different business owners. So that is a wrap up for our Tuesday's Tools on Purpose. I hope you guys enjoy this tool LinkedIn and that Carter has given you some uh, best practices. Uh, we do also have that sheet available. We'll put that link in the podcast so you can click on it um, and download some other things that he is doing. But remember guys that every small action can lead to big results. What action are you going to take today in regards to LinkedIn? Write it down and go implement it. 
For those of you that are tired of living in chaos and you're eager for more knowledge or you're just interested in advancing your journey through coaching, please feel free to contact me. My email is also um, in this post. It's Patrice at mybusinessonpurpose.com. I'd love to connect with you, learn more about your business. Uh, we also have a healthy business owner assessment. So if you'd like to learn how healthy your business actually is, you can scan the QR code that is also in this podcast and you can find out what your score is. So thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.